here on The Colour of Country Life. Good to be speaking with Transport and Infrastructure Minister Catherine King. How are you today, Catherine? I'm really well, thanks, Ricky. Well, we've spoken before the election in your shadow role about your concerns about the Building Better Regions Fund. The Audit Office on Friday has indicated there was some, some good reason for those concerns. Look, absolutely. I think you and I have spoken a lot about the Building Better Regions Funds and other regional funding programs and what the audit report and the auditor found yesterday in auditing all five rounds of the Building Better Regions Fund was that basically 65% of the infrastructure stream, and they're the really big projects, which make up almost 98% of the billion-dollar program, were not ones assessed by the department as having the most merit. Uh, And then what we saw was we had ministers increasingly relied on criteria of their own choosing from a non-exhaustive list of other factors, uh, which also included a dot point other factors as one of the factors, which is just completely bizarre, um, which was not fully known to applicants to make their decisions. Uh, certainly in terms of the con- consultation post um, during assessment, it looks as though they've spent quite a bit of time talking to um, certainly National and Liberal Party MPs, but not to other party MPs in their seats. And then what we've seen as a result of that is that we We've got increasingly, as the program went on, less and less accountability and transparency in terms of decision making. And in fact, almost it looks like um, they've, you know, really it's been a choose your own adventure exercise where the department at the end of the day hasn't actually provided any recommendations to the government about what to fund. It's just provided a pool of projects that they could fund. And all of that's resulted in national seats benefiting uh, more than they would otherwise if a merit assessment process had actually been relied on. Well, we spoke previously about a controversial spreadsheet approach that we unearthed about this uh, pink category of projects that hadn't been given the tick, but somehow if you made the right case to the right people, you'd get it over the line, but Labor MPs didn't seem to have the same opportunity. Uh, How does that interface with what we've learned from the Audit Office during the week? Well, I think it is absolutely, like, I think it is exactly what happened. I think it's hard, you know, the Audit Office doesn't know, you know, well, in fact, the Audit Office in the report says that there was consultation undertaken by this secret ministerial panel, again, no transparency about the panel, uh, with MPs. And when I, you know, when you ask the Audit Office, uh, the, the view is that certainly, and the view that I would hold uh, out of reading that report is that there are only certain MPs that were actually asked about projects and certain that weren't. And as a result of that, it's meant that um, we've again seen this skew in projects. And, and I see some of the national party commentary today about, well, you know, it means that we, our seats get a fair share and all of those sorts of things. It's actually not about that. It's about making sure that everyone's on a level playing field when they're applying. These grants take a lot of time, energy and effort, a lot of money to put in. Um, you know, there's guidelines that actually make sure that we look after smaller regional councils that might struggle. Um, the guidelines, you know, sort of look to try and um, ensure that they're, they're looked upon favourably um, so that they're not disadvantaged because of their size. But really, if what the, at the end of the day is what you've got is ministers just going to talk to people that you know they they know uh, and not wanting to talk to MPs in other areas, um, then the end outcome is this sort of skewing of results and that's pretty unfair for regions right the way across the country. Now this ministerial panel you mentioned, you've mentioned the Nationals a few times, did it only have Nationals ministers on it or who was on this panel now that we know about it? Well the audit report um, details um, each of the panels, it sort of moved, it looks like it might have moved about a bit, it certainly it looks like it's always been chaired by a National Party minister who's held the portfolio and to be fair they started off pretty well, they had Minister Nash at the start of it and the audit report looked pretty favourably around uh, on round one but by the time we get to rounds uh, three and then to round five in particular the audit report's really scathing about just the uh, lack of um, adhering to recommendations, the fact that then there weren't any really any recommendations coming up from the department at all and then again this sort of consultation process before decisions were actually taken and largely it was at national MPs who were on the panel. There were a couple, it looks like on a couple of occasions, Liberal MPs as well. Well, um, I'm sure the community groups that got those grants were you know, pleased as punch to get them and it's not to say the projects were necessarily bad yeah. but what does the government yeah. do from here on in to I guess have a, a 
level playing field or at least rectify what the audit office has identified? Yeah, so there's a few things. I mean, there's a Commonwealth Grants Guideline and really I think making sure all ministers are aware that that Commonwealth Grant Guideline exists and that you adhere to it and that includes that every round of projects actually the department does have to provide recommendations to the minister or to ministerial panels about what's meritorious in funding. Um, Ministers have to be held to account if they fund outside of those recommendations and be transparent about the decisions why just saying other factors is actually not okay. It's really not providing the level of detail that is defensible in terms of the decisions that you've made and I think that's um, you know, uh, an important lesson here. But I also think it's about you know, of course communities, when you get a grant, it's amazing and it's a great experience to be able to actually you know, build um, you know, bigger pavilions for your sporting facilities, cultural and art precincts, tourism precincts, roads, all of those things. But really, when there's communities that are missing out, and this is what this is, it wasn't just Labor seats that missed out, we did worse, um, but some Liberal seats missed out as well, and certainly some smaller rural communities and rural areas did really badly, as opposed to some of the National Party regional seats. So again, it really is about trying to say, well, what's the purpose of a regional fund? And the purpose of a regional fund is to try and help the economic development and social development opportunities of all regions, and you have to try and do that fairly. So so I've got a bit of work to do to try and clean some of this up. This is not the only uh, bucket of money that the National Party's had their hands all over. Or, uh, so in terms of my portfolio, um, there is around six of the Building Better Regions Fund that hadn't been concluded by the time the government uh, went into caretaker. Uh, I'm having a bit of a think about what I might do about that. I think um, given the audit report, I think it's going to be quite hard to proceed uh, with that round, but I want to make sure that there's something to replace place it, but something that's fairer, something that's more transparent, and that's something that actually provides opportunities for all MPs to advocate about their really important projects in their seats, not just some that um, are the wrong colour. Is that a, pro- a round there where um, groups had already made submissions to or hadn't got to that stage yet? Yeah, so there was applications were made and, and the application process closed, uh, and it looks as though there may have been some assessments done on those within the department, but again... Uh, I haven't asked for advice about that yet because I was awaiting this Australian National Audit Office report. And I think, again, it's difficult given the guidelines of the project. As I said, you know, you had four published guidelines of this project, but then you also had this other guideline, which was other matters or other factors. And it's really hard when you've got a set of guidelines that say, here are the four main core things that you need to apply for, and that's how everybody is applied. But then there's this other factor sitting in the guidelines that any, you, know, you can assess under pretty much anything uh, as being more important than those four, other, those four factors. It's really hard to see whether that um, grant program, you know, isn't going to be skewed one way. So I think, think I'm having a bit of a think about it, but I think it'd be fair to say that it's it's under a bit of a cloud given this audit report. Yeah, those other factors sound like whether you could twist a colleague's arm hard enough or not. I guess we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> oh, you said it, Ricky, yeah. but oh, I reckon you're not far wrong. All right. Well, uh, we'll talk about other matters another time. Thank you, Minister <laughs> Catherine King, for joining us today. Really good to talk to you, mate.